<laughs> um, this is the wrong room. It's been over a year since I got my acceptance letter for my number one choice for med school. The moment was so surreal. I was so relieved that I finally made it through the gate. But for a good while, I was a bit intimidated and uncertain of how I was going to handle med school. Once I put the white coat on, it hit me that this was the real deal. I can only speak for myself that it wasn't easy. I wasn't used to waking up at 6 in the morning every day and I was definitely not used to the amount of studying that I had to do. They say that the first semester of med school is the hardest and they were right. Here's my first year of med school. First semester of anatomy, molecules to medicine, attack and defense. The schedule is hectic. 8 to 12 p.m. and on anatomy lab days from 8 to 5 p.m. After almost every anatomy lab dissection, I would take long naps that would last probably from three to four hours long. Even though I did this, I don't advise this at all. It would have been better if I did 15 to 30 minute naps. My sleep schedule is all over the place. I get as little as maybe four hours of sleep to as max as on a really good day, eight hours. I don't remember the last time I got eight hours of sleep. Stay up late, then I go to sleep at three o'clock. But at the same time, when you're not rested, it's really hard to retain information and understand material, so it's important to sleep. The amount of studying I had to do outweighed everything I had in undergrad. Incredibly overwhelming, but doable. Second semester of hematology and oncology, respiratory, cardiology, and clinical skills. We drew blood. Checked out how our reading capacity was. And listened to art sounds, just to name a few labs. Now, studying. Back in undergrad, it was very easy to push off studying for exams. Not the case for med school. There's this pancake analogy. You have a certain amount of pancakes you have to eat a day. If you don't finish the pancakes, then you have to eat more the next day. And it keeps stacking up as you keep putting it off. Same thing works for studying. The more reading you put off, the bigger the pile gets. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Everyone has a different way of managing their time in studying. I would mostly study alone, but sometimes I would study with other students. It helps to stay motivated and focused. It helps to quiz each other, and it's surprising to find out what you might not know. In terms of resources, obviously the class notes are the first thing to go to, the main thing you have to study, but over med the first year of med school, I realized that there are so many supplemental resources available. It's sort of hard to keep up with. In undergrad, all you needed was the PowerPoints and some YouTube videos, and you were good for the most part. In med school, there are many resources like Pathoma, Sketchy Micro, Sketchy Farm, Sketchy Path, Forza Beyond, Osmosis, and First Aid. I'm sure I left out many others. This took some time figuring out what would work for me, what didn't work for me, because there simply wasn't enough time to go over everything. Teams and quizzes. In undergrad, there wasn't a lot of team activities other than some science labs like Gen Chem, OChem, Bio Lab. What's cool about med school is that they emphasize teamwork. There are multiple teams that I was assigned to for quizzes and anatomy lab. Every Monday we have weekly quizzes that covers the classes from the previous week, which were great because it helps us keep up with the material. We take an individual quiz, then turn that in, and then we take a team quiz that covers the same questions. If I had gaps in my knowledge, other teammates would be there to help fill them in, and I would try my best to do the same for them. Exams. The exams range from as little as 20 questions to as many as 100 questions that we took on our laptops in an auditorium. It covered everything that we've learned from that module. What's really neat and helpful is that we get a free study week available for us to use to prepare for that exam. This is also usually the time I go insane. Constant studying. Everyone has this idea, even myself had this idea that you don't have a life once you're in med school. And maybe that's true to an extent. There are holidays like Thanksgiving, winter break, spring break, and summer. I can go back home to visit family and friends. <laughs> bald, bald, bald! My eyes, my eyes! No, it's a coyote. 
But even during med school, there are time to do whatever you want outside of school. You can have fun and spend time for yourself, hanging out with friends, watching movies, TV, exercise, and of course napping. <laughs> it really depends on how you make the most out of your time. There's time for volunteering. I enjoy my time volunteering at a refugee clinic. I'm gonna go ahead over to the clinic right now. Who knows how long I'm gonna actually be there for. We'll see. Working at a farm for a nonprofit food bank. Shaving my head for cancer research. Do what you want to do, but prioritize. I came to med school with no intentions of making any friends. I just thought, okay, I'm here now, just gonna study, come home, go back to school, come home, eat, sleep, and study. It's a helicopter. I didn't have too many pre-med friends. I had acquaintances in undergrad uh, because I wanted to separate my school life from my outside life. You know, I was really surprised to find out there are people that are they're definitely hardworking and want the best out of you. Like they, everyone lifts each other up, and they're so kind, so smart, amazing people, funny, have different interests, like even same similar interests that you might have. That it was very surprising to find out when I came to med school. I. I'm so thankful that I met a lot of these people and they definitely helped me grow as a student over the year and as a person. They motivated me to study hard and harder and to do better. These are people that stuck with me throughout the year and could relate with my struggles and know what I'm going through because they're also going through the same thing. Pretty sure I would have lost my sanity without these awesome people. As someone who's lived with their parents for his whole life until graduating from college, I can say that the transition to living alone was pretty nice, but at the same time very difficult. It was rough. Going through med school was rough. And I, like I said before in the beginning of the video, that the first semester was definitely the hardest. But over this quick year, and I did not have this idea that, okay, the first year is gonna be really quick. A second year told me that first year goes by really quick. And I was like, okay, yeah, right. This is gonna be the longest year of my life. Uh, and surprisingly, yeah, it passed by really quick. I still have a lot that I need to work on because there's always room for improvement. And knowing myself, of course, I have to reflect and try my best to improve and do better. This has been one of the most stressful yet best experiences in my educational journey. One year down, three more to go. See ya in year two.